and critics alike once believed the role of Todd Manning on One Life to Live could never be recast. But when our first guest took over the part two years ago, he proved everyone wrong. Take a look. This, uh, this cat you've been seeing, he's a run-of-the-mill shrink. I, I think you need to see an expert. See this, uh, Susanna Hannon woman. Do you want to fix Vicky? Sure, she can fix you too. Okay, it's fine. I'll see her. But just Jess, tell where have you been? We've left messages everywhere. She's on assignment with the van. Um, how's my mother? She's in with the doctor. Hey, Jess, wait. Hey, hey, hey. She's worried sick about her mother. She doesn't need a third degree from you. I know what she needs. Then leave her alone. Please welcome Trevor St. John. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Here in L.A., we've had you at Super Soap yeah. a couple times. This is the real deal. It's the real That's deal, right. baby. Welcome. Nice jacket. Thanks. Thank you very much. And nice I like hair. I like that hair. Yeah, it's a little different. Yeah, yeah. It looks a little bit like a soap actor before, so I cut it off. Really? I like it. Yeah. I like it. This is good. It's working. It's really good. Yeah. Now, first I want to ask you, first of all, you got to be happy to be out of that bed. Because I was watching. I no, felt bad I'm for not you. happy You're at not? all. No, it's easy no. work being that bad. That's right. So well, I, I get up in the down. morning. I get up early in the morning. And uh, I go into work, and then I lay down again. So it's perfect. <laughs> so how long were you in that bed? Uh, oh, gosh. It must have been four months. Really? Yeah. yeah. Now, when, they went on, when the crew went on breaks, did they just leave you tied up? Like, hey, Trevor, we'll see you later. Yeah, yeah. actually, they did that to me once. They though. did that to Yeah, you? that's awful. They yeah. just leave you there. Yeah. <laughs> His lights went out and everything. Yeah. Like, yeah, Trevor, we'll see him in the morning. Yeah. He'll be fine. fine. Now, I heard you just got a play. I did. Tell us about that. It's called An Ideal Husband by Oscar Wilde. Oh, excellent. Nice. Excellent. A period piece, yes? It's a, yes, period yes. piece. is in a British accent and everything. Now, is this in New York that you're mm -hmm. doing in New York? Mm -hmm. Yeah, obviously. It's yeah. going to be tough with the schedule, though, no? Well, uh, I've been told that I, that I can do whatever I wish. Is that well, right? What does that feel like? <laughs> I love that. You yeah. can do whatever Absolutely. you wish. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now that you're doing uh, um, theater and you've done a lot of film and you've done theater before, but you've said, I've, I've seen you quoted as saying that daytime is one of the hardest jobs you've ever had and you're sure that it will be the hardest you've ever you Yeah, know. it I, is I, the I, hardest job. Yeah, well, oh, you guys great. would attest to that, would you not? <laughs> well, I, I do from my experiences. Yeah, the amount of material, uh, the, 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 reason, or the fact that it's on a daily basis, uh, and the fact that you have to come up with something at least interesting every day. And, and it's quite possible that you just saw this stuff six yeah. hours ago. And a lot of times without rehearsal. A yes, to rehearsal. a lot of the stuff, like this, the take you just saw there was the first take. Right. And you finish and you think, oh, no, that's going to go on the air. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that then happens, that happens 80% of the time. Well, you're driving and home and you're like, oh, I know what I should have done. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, there's oh, no time. Are you still sharing a dressing room with Dan Gautier? I am, unfortunately, yes. <laughs> oh, no, I'm kidding. Now, who's, who's the neat one? Who's the messy one? Oh, I'm definitely the neat one. Are you really? Yeah, and I and I actually smell okay. He he's got a bit of a hygiene problem. Yeah, he's I noticed really that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 He stinks. Really? Yeah. Quite frankly, yeah. I'm so surprised. Yeah, and he and he likes to. I don't spend much time in the dressing room. You know, he likes to. He likes to be naked a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and he likes to go over his lines naked in the mirror and look at himself. Yeah. So I don't spend much time there. <laughs> we should put a little video camera in the dressing room. That's good times right there. No. Obviously, you guys are best friends. How long have you guys been friends, though? You were friends before the show, right? No. Oh, you weren't? No, we got thrown together in the dressing room and... and uh... And just uh, by default, we became friends. Oh, okay. That's yeah. No one would want to become <laughs> friends. Well, that's kind no of how we become, become friends. friends. With Dan. I mean, unless you're <laughs> by default, right? So now you're also a jazz, an accomplished jazz percussionist, not yes. just a drummer, percussionist. Are you still playing? You find any time with that? Or? Yeah. Uh, you all know Renee Goldsberry plays Evangeline. Yes, we've had her on the show. Yeah. Beautiful singer. Yes, beautiful singer, beautiful woman, beautiful person. Uh, she's quite a musician, and she and I did a, a duet at the last uh, Super Soap Super weekend. Soap. And we went into the studio and recorded a demo, and we hope to do an album. Great. Yeah, for oh, original great. Yeah. I'm gonna have to come back and play for us, man. That'd oh, be I'd love it. Yes. That'd be great. What? You taking oh, a break? Are we taking a break? No, we're not yeah. taking a break. Hold on, really? Here we are, we gotta we're coming back. More. We gotta travel over we'll we'll back. Coming up next, Trevor reveals what it was like to land his first major role opposite Glenn Close.
Later, Chef J. Mark raped me. And uh, you found out about it. And we had a little talk. We got over it. And as you say, we're, we're well on our way to getting our lives back. But that does not mean that I'm going to strand around and let Asa and Margaret get away with what they did to us. I'm going to do whatever I can, whatever it takes to make them pay. You understand me? And you're just going to have to sit back and like it. Because that's who I am. That's the Todd Manning you wanted back. Right? So do you like watching yourself or no, do you just like it no, like I everyone like, else? Yeah, like no. everyone else. <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? Sam, typically, yeah, I don't like to watch myself at all. But you seem to revel in this character. I mean, you've really That's done so well with this fun. character. Yeah, oh, thanks. Yeah. It was so much fun. You have uh, a lot of license with, with Todd because he's a loose cannon and you don't unpredictable. Have to so, much. And so I like to be unpredictable in my work, so that's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Great. And Cassie DeFive, a great actress. She's also yeah. very good at that going along with that, with the improv. And She's quite good. At she plays and responds uh, as well as anyone I've ever worked yeah. with. Yeah. yeah. Now, you've also you've come from great movies before you came to the soap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's talk about yeah. a couple of them. Right, the first one, Higher Learning, which was your first ever film first role. First ever film role. Yeah, I was a. I was a Film here? Yeah, I played a, one of the skinheads. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> I was so nervous in my first <laughs> film role. We finished shooting a, a scene, and John Singleton, the director, comes to me. He says, Trevor, I really thought you did nice work in that scene. And I said, Yeah, hi, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and he looked at me like this. Patted me on the shoulder and walked away. Good actor. He's a little yeah. strange, but yeah. he's a good actor. <laughs> it's very funny. Now, Serving in Silence was your first major film with Glenn Close. Yeah. Like your son. That's an intimidating first role, first major role. That's intimidating. Well, I was, I was a little intimidated. As a matter of fact, I, I stuck my foot in my mouth yet again. We were up in Vancouver uh, before shooting, and I called her up. She was in one of the rooms above me, and I said, Miss Close, uh, my name's Trevor St. John, and I'm going to be playing your son, and I'm wondering if we could, uh, if I could introduce myself. And she says, Not now. Oh! But, but, but well, bear with me. And I was just, oh, I felt so terrible. I thought, yeah. I've really interrupted oh. something, and I, I overstepped my bounds in some way. So I, I show up on the set the first day. She says, Trevor? And I said, Yeah. So I, I hope that you didn't think I was being curt or, or cold with you. I was just in the middle of dinner and I, I just said, you know, I didn't want to do it now. Oh, oh So nice. she was really nice. Oh, good. It. Yeah. Oh, good, good. But good. I thought, I, I, yet again, I, I've been an idiot. Uh, but she was wonderful to work with. Yeah, she's I mean, phenomenal. I mean, just, I you didn't bet. have to do anything. Yeah, she's very good. Sort of like Ty working with me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, and one of my, that's very true. One of my favorite films, Crimson Tide. I love that Crimson movie. Crimson Tide. Oh, great oh. movie. Yeah. Tony Stark Gene Hackman. That was Tony, Tony Stark. Tony Stark. Gene Hackman was, was a, just, you know, he's a huge man and a force to be reckoned with as an yeah. actor, of course. The whole movie took place in a submarine. It was a yeah, but it was uh, down in Culver City. Yeah. And they, they had this thing called a gimbal, which is on a, it's a hydraulic uh, platform. Oh. So you don't have to pretend to be leaning forward, you know, like they did in Star Trek. And oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That, yeah. So you're actually, were, had to be angled. Moving. and Yeah, moving. And... Uh, it was such a high uh, budget feature that they could tear away sets, and so it wasn't, oh, it wasn't one, so, angle. Like one angle, and when they turned around for coverage, they could tear the other side away. Jeez. Got to rebuild the first set. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's cool. It makes it a lot more easier. Yeah. I owed Paul Shore. I was going to say, what was that like? But, well, that was a lot of fun. That, has, that was that's yeah, such a here? cult classic. Everybody knows yeah. that film. Are you kidding me? I love Paul Shore. Oh, no. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think there's anyone here under 15 years old, so I don't know. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. It was just yeah. craziness, absurdity. Your wife, beautiful wife, Sarah, Sarah from right. Sweden, right? From Sweden, yes. Now, have you been to Sweden? Or? I have, a couple times. Beautiful. beautiful. How did you meet? Yeah. We met, I was in uh, Los Angeles. I just finished uh, shooting a pilot and I had some free time, so I was frequenting this cafe in Westwood. And one time I go in there, and I, and I sit down, and I look around and to this woman behind the counter. And I was just floored. I mean, she Aww. was angelic. And uh, so I was so moved by her that I started to write her anonymous poetry. Really? Yeah. And I wrote these poems, and I left the first one on the chair where she took her break. 
And, uh, and then I had passers-by come in and, and give them to her. And the, f- the fourth one, I couldn't take it anymore. I had to meet her. So the fourth one, uh, it was always in the same envelope. And so it was in this blue envelope. And I set this, uh, or I asked for my latte. And she goes around to make it. And I put the envelope down and a $5 bill on top of that. And she comes back and... She went red, and I went red. Wow. And I said, first of all, I want you to know I'm not a stalker. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have five minutes we can sit down and talk? And we sat down, and it turned out she had a boyfriend at the time. Of course. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I come in next week, and she's gone. And I asked the manager, what happened to Swedish Sarah? And he said, I'm not telling you. <laughs> You're that stalker yeah, doing right, the blue envelopes. Right. <laughs> Cut to... Four and a half years later. You're kidding me. I'm driving down Melrose Avenue. And, I, and I, I've got this new book that I've been wanting to read in this coffee shop. I can't remember the name. It looks like an uh, old cabin. I see this parking spot right next to it. And I pull right in. And I go into this place I've never been before. And I walk in. And as I'm walking, this blonde oh. lady is walking out oh. with her coffee. She's not working there, but she's a customer. Wow. And so I walk in and we lock oh, eyes. Yeah. And I said, Sarah. She said, Trevor. And, and we, we small talked a little bit. And bottom line is, I said, uh, are you still seeing someone? And she said, no, are you? And I said, no. Wow. Would you like to go out? And we went out oh, about a week later, and we were married six months later. Oh, I oh, love that story! Great story. Oh. How fabulous! Great story. Talk about faith. Isn't that great? Thank great you for story. sharing Thank you so much. Let's go away. We'll be right back. Woo! <laughs>